We come to our time of devotion, and today we are going to continue with our heart and soul devotion. The devotion that uh, we are going through for this 2021 Lenten season. During the week, we are going through the book of Psalms. And on Sundays, we are working through um, some of the gospel stories on treasures of the heart. So last week, we did earthly treasures and heavenly treasures. And today, we are going to hear a story about Jesus, one of the rare stories that we have of Jesus as a child in the Gospel of Luke, and it's going to hopefully cause us to think about sharing our hearts. So as always, I would encourage you to still do the devotion for yourself. I'm going to read the God, the story that we have um, assigned for today, and then I'm going to kind of do my own little reflection, but I encourage you to do a reflection yourself. It's going to be different than mine, um, and that's a good thing. That means that um, we are really listening. We're opening our hearts We're um, to where God is speaking in our lives. So our gospel um, or our reading for our devotion today comes from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 2, verses 41 to 52. Now every year, Jesus' parents went to Jerusalem over the festival of the Passover. And when Jesus was 12 years old, they went up as usual for the festival. When the festival had ended, they started to return. The boy, Jesus, stayed behind in Jerusalem, but his parents did not know it. Assuming that he was in the group of travelers, they went a day's journey. Then they started looking for him among their relatives and friends. When they did not find Jesus, they returned to Jerusalem and searched for him. After three days, they found him in the temple, sitting among the teachers, listening to them and asking them questions. And all who heard Jesus were amazed at his understanding and his answers. When his parents saw him, they were astonished. And his mother said to him, Child, why have you treated us like this? Look, your father and I have been searching for you with great anxiety. Jesus said to them, Why were you searching for me? Did you not know that I must be in my father's house? But they did not understand what Jesus said to them. Then Jesus went down with them and came to Nazareth, and he was obedient to them. His mother, his mother treasured all these things in her heart, and Jesus increased in wisdom and in years, and in divine and human favor. Right at the beginning of our reading and our devotion for today, a thought, a saying kept going in my brain. It takes a village to raise a child. I mean, we've all heard it, right? I know that there is no way if Adrian and I were solely the ones in charge of raising our boys, that they would turn out half as good as I see them becoming. When Adrian and I first decided to move to Washington to be closer to Adrian's family and where Adrian grew up, I decided that I was going to be a stay-at-home parent to our then six-month-old Beckett. What a great bonding time. We could do endless story times. We could go on walks all the time around our neighborhood. It would be glorious, I told myself. We moved to Washington in May of 2013. And by August, I was so bored, I started looking for a job. But this job hunt was different. First, I was an ordained pastor, but I wasn't ready for a call to a church. I felt a call to stay home with Beckett. But Beckett and I had also learned that as fun as story times were, we weren't cut out to sit and listen to them over and over each day. And as good for the body as those endless walks were, Becca didn't have the patience to sit in a stroller for that long. And I sure didn't have the back to carry my very cute but very chubby little guy endlessly. 
So for the sake of my sanity and my back, I entered the job market. And I found an ad in our Senate's website for a secretary position at a local ELCA church, just the next town over. Perfect, right? I filled out the application and I went in for the interview and that's when I dropped the ball on them or the bomb on them. Could I possibly bring my then 10 month old son with me? Now I know it was a God thing because they said yes. And I ended up raising not one, but two sons while working there. Oftentimes you could find the Bonero boys sitting in on a meeting with the pastor or making Lessa with the local Sons of Norway group, or maybe fixing something in the building with the maintenance workers, or they would also be at the preschool doing all kinds of fun activities. I can't think of a more beneficial environment for them to grow up in. Like in the story we hear for today's devotion, Jesus, Mary, and Joseph, they also had a community around them. And when Jesus went missing, the community knew them and could help them search for where Jesus might have gone. But then we hear a challenge once Jesus is found that Jesus gives to Mary and in turn, gives to us. Did you not know where I would be? And then Jesus begins to tell them about his heart. We don't ever, we don't always get things right as parents, okay? I mean, if I'm going to be completely honest, <clears throat> we oftentimes don't get things right as parents. Every once in a while, I find myself annoyed with my now eight-year-old Beckett, who is trying to teach me the right way of doing something, something that I have literally done a thousand times. Mom, did you remember to do this and this and this? Yes, Beckett. You do remember I'm the parent, right? But then I catch myself and remembering that this village that helped me raise him showed him what compassion looks like and that he took on various office tasks as a young child. And sharing and offering this advice is what teamwork looks like. In those times when Beckett seems to try to parent me, I see that it's really an attempt to connect with me on a common ground that we share. And we don't have a lot of information as Jesus is a child. We hear about Jesus being born and then here Jesus is 12. And next, usually we don't hear about Jesus until he's around the age of 30 and getting ready to be baptized and begin his public ministry. I imagine that Jesus spent many of his childhood years teaching his parents and in turn himself those things that were truly in his heart. One of the ways that I connect with Mary so much is when I read passages when she treasures these things in her heart. And we are challenged today to connect with our own heart to treasure there, but not just to keep it to ourselves, but like Beckett, we ask ourselves how we might share those treasures and how we might receive those treasures when others share them with us, the things that they hold in their hearts. And it can be scary to open up our hearts to admit that we maybe don't know everything, to admit that maybe there are some empty spaces in our heart that are in need of feeling. 
but it can also make a huge difference in someone's life. Not to mention all the things that we would then gain. Do you get the theme that's starting here? Last week, we were challenged with thinking about our earthly and heavenly treasures. And this week, we are charged with looking inside of our hearts. And all the way that those treasures of the heart can shape us, grow us, and be shared among us. Amen.